evening at 7 to 6 30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information um, will be Randy Iser and a Randy Iser. Go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Um, what we have on the screen before us is a partial plan of Sapphire Estates uh, owned by Ron Burkum. And what he's trying to do is change two of the lots. Uh, when the subdivision was approved, lot one and lot 16 had some excess land on the side of the road, which is good for nothing, but we did he didn't have anything he wanted to do with it, so we made it part of the lots. Now he's concerned that uh, it, some of the abutters may, at some point in the future, try to acquire some of those lots, what I show as parcel A and parcel B, and try to gain frontage off of Sapphire Estate, the road. And I've told him that the planning board's decision was that there is no further subdivision, but he's concerned that sometime in the future, things may change. He does not want to upset the current stature of his subdivision. So he wants to take parcel A and parcel B and make common space out of that, which will not uh, uh, will take it away from lot one and lot 16. Uh, I've called them revised lot one and revised lot 16. They meet the requirement mm -hmm. of the zoning bylaw, 175 feet of frontage, 150 foot square fits in the lot. Uh, and so that's the gist of the plan. Okay, so just to be clear, Randy, lot one and lot 16 as revised meet zoning and parcel A and parcel B are just gonna be what? Common land, open space. Okay. Uh, just not part of, they're gonna to belong to either Burkum himself or I don't think he's got a homeowners association out there, but he just doesn't want them to be privately owned so that if the planning board's uh, vision, if you will, changes in the future, he doesn't want any extra lots being able to access off of his road. But, Randy, doesn't, doesn't common land suggest that the owners of the individual lots in the development owned it, own undivided interest in the common land? Well, that's what one would assume, but I have no idea what he wants to do with it, Mike other than keep it away from the, the abutters. Okay. I mean, obviously they're not a building lot, so they can't do anything except become, I mean, who's gonna maintain them? He will have to. But there's gonna be like, there's gonna grow overgrow with wood like they are now? Well, I, I would imagine, if that's what it is now, then it would probably stay like that. If it was, if it was lawn or something, I'm sure he would maintain it. Okay. I mean, well, I don't, really I don't see it. I don't see any problem with what he wants to do. Just kind of, just kind of different. Yeah, I hear you, Randy. Don't with you. lot one, the one pointing to the uh, former Shala property, that's yes, APR land now. So that no, cannot it's be not. developed. It's not. So, Joe, that's not APR. That's the that's the slaughterhouse, and that isn't an APR. Oh, good to know. Okay. It's so the land that's behind the slaughterhouse. So that's what he's concerned about. He's concerned with Shala and also uh, there's two abutters to the north that would, you know, potentially have access, uh, particularly the, 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 the one that's got the longest amount of frontage there or, or uh, butting that uh, parcel uh, A. I think it's, it's Watoits right now. They have, they have enough land there that they possibly could create a second lot and that he's def definitely concerned about that. Okay. All right, I mean, any other question, any other comments on the board? <clears throat> yep. I'll make a motion to uh, authorize signature at the APR. Second. There a second, all in favor? Mr. Aye. Dyer? Aye. 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 Mr. Zagradik? Aye. Mr. Dunn? Aye. Mr. Sar, Mr. Sarzinski? Aye. And Max Maskey, aye. Unanimous, aye. Okay, gentlemen, how do we deal with this now as far as getting the plan signed? 
anyone, anyone, Joe, Bill, or myself can sign it. Yeah, but I have to circulate. I still have to get uh, uh, circulate around a letter that has to be filed with the Registry of Deeds to authorize that. Okay. So, okay. I was going. To, I was thinking I'd run into people somehow, and that. But I'm just going to drop it in the mail tomorrow to one of you, and have you send it on to the others. So all five of us have to sign the letter to approve any one of the three of us signing the documents. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'll get a hold of one of you and get the plan signed, and and I've got the form A, uh, and we'll we'll deal with that. I guess Jimmy, you'll have to. You want me to send you the form A so you can tell me what the fee is going to be? Yeah, I don't, it, it, it's not going to be based on fronted because it's kind of a real. You'll go. I mean, it's a. I'll, I'll figure out some reasonable fee. Okay, I'll just I'll make a PDF of it and send it. I'll email it to you, and then you can just get it back to me, and I'll add that to the. Yeah, that's next. fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. So, is there okay. no is there no stipulation about how parcel A and parcel B will be maintained? There is nothing. That, again, if as long as Berkum owns that, he will make sure he won't let it get ugly. I can guarantee you that. He's got a lot of lots left in there, and I'm I know he wants to keep it nice, and I think ultimately he wants to live out there. So. He'll he'll make sure it's it stays as long as he's in charge. And it may be if they may be just woods right now for the most part, anyhow. Okay. Okay. I guess you can right. it up, Bill. Okay. Take that Whoa. out. Good job, Bill. That was fast. Look at that. <laughs> Next. <laughs> okay, so if I may, I have another question regarding something else. Yep. And that is the lot on Middle Street that was a one lot subdivision for Valley Real Estate, Peter Gelinas, next to Ted Kozier. There's a potential buyer of that lot, and he has been in contact with Mr. Kozier about gaining access and a water or a utility easement and access easement over Kozier's property off of Kozier Lane instead of accessing it off of Middle Street. And I know that I said something, uh, I sent an email to you guys about possibly uh, a permit for access over something other than frontage. And you've told me that that is not appropriate and possibly, but but possibly a common drive situation might work. So I just need to get a feel from the board what what your uh, opinions are on that, so I can talk to this client and advise him accordingly as to what he needs to do to move forward. Okay. First of all, on the uh, access across other than frontage, the way the intent of that bylaw was that if a, a person would need to own the frontage on both the street that they have legal access and on a street that they want to go where they want to go access other than frontage. They, it wasn't intended to be get an easement from somebody and cross somebody else's lot on frontage. Um, however, the common driveway is a possibility provided both houses would have truly a common driveway. In this case, Mr. Kozier would have to have this easement as his driveway as well. Okay, and that wouldn't work, I'm sure of that, because of where his house is situated. Um, but I'll have to talk to them. I just needed to understand the, you know, the intricacies of it. And I do now, I get what you're saying. So I will talk to this gentleman and see what he wants to do. But uh, what, what if the easement was there before this request was made. It would have to be there before the subdivision was put in. Well, even even so that I don't think it would it would uh yeah it, you, even, you even guys wouldn't have allowed it. They, they need to they yeah. need to own both frontage areas of that lot. Okay. okay. And Jimmy. Yep. I I think it would be behoove you to 
uh, fine tune that the language in the bylaw because looking at it right now, it tells me that I can access, I don't need frontage on the, my side or rear yard to access. It just says that you, the planning board can allow over any side or rear yard. So it, it just isn't clear. I understand what you're saying that the intent wasn't there, but that's not what I read in the bylaw. Okay, okay. so noted. Okay, all right. So that's all I have this evening. You have anything exciting happening tonight? Can't You're really looking do a lot at of it. exciting stuff without having a public <laughs> hearing. <laughs> oh, so, have you figured have, have you figured out how to hold a public hearing? No, not, a, not the, the reason is if it's a simple public hearing, like we've got, I'll, I'll use with a good example of somebody off of, uh, I think it's High Meadow that wants an accessory apartment. That's a simple thing. We could probably hold a public hearing on that. We could probably hold a public hearing on the zoning amendments for town meeting because those don't, I think, are not going to have high interest. But we have several public hearings pending that have a lot of interest from abutters and okay. other townspeople. And it would probably be a bit difficult to have a really uh, well informed public hearing like this. Yeah. Where you may have. I want to say as many as 20 or 30 people trying to put their, in, their input into it. Yeah, well, I don't disagree with that. <laughs> Including some who are not tech savvy enough to make their voices heard. Yeah, no, yeah. I understand. Yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't certainly wouldn't push the issue. I get it. It's too difficult. No question about it. Yeah, okay, I just need to well, the understand. Dogs Jim, Jim, <laughs> hey, uh, exactly. Jim, Randy. Yes, sir. Jim, uh, there was, you were telling me that the governor would make an extension, you know, how we have the 45 days to respond on their site plan. Uh, yes. Evidently, yeah. that is going to be extended to when the quarantine is lifted and they will give the planning board an extension. So we're not under the gun with the, the, uh, the time constraints. That's right. right. And we, the, the, the governor has given people, boards that have public hearings like this, 45 days after the moratorium, for lack of a better term, ends to conduct a public hearing and make a decision. Gotcha. Okay. Well, if anybody comes bef to me that needs a public hearing, I would certainly advise them to wait until the state of emergency has been lifted and we can get back to normal business, unless it's something really simple. Yeah, because I've got I've had a few people call me. They've got they've got something ready to apply for a special permit, and I told them you can apply, but when we really can't do anything with it, and uh, so they I said you know, if you wait until this this uh, lack of like is a moratorium for lack of a better term is over, then apply, then we can go on business as usual. Be the easiest way as opposed to apply and then now you sit and wait. Gotcha. All right. That's all I have this evening. I guess I can, I'll, I will check out now because I'm sure there's nothing more I need to listen to. <laughs> Thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Bye -bye. Okay, bye-bye. I believe Ann Bronner was next. Hello. Um, I'm so my name is Ann Bronner and I live at 198 Rocky Hill Road and I think I just got some of my information already. Um, I'd like to install Install an accessory apartment in my basement. I have a, a dear friend of mine that's moving back to the area permanently, and we thought that it would make sense to share expenses. So um, I have uh, done preliminary work. I talked to Tim Nyhart. I have plans. I have um, th the driveway sketched out by Randy, and. Um, everything that I can think of. So my understanding from listening to the meeting tonight is that I need to wait and do it at a public meeting. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we, you, we could technically could accept it now, but if you applied, it's just going to sit in limbo until this thing kind of clears up and we can give it, give you a date. Um, are you on sewer okay. or, or septic? Septic. Septic. Or do you have something from the Board of Health that says your system can accept the extra, extra room? Uh, no, but uh, I didn't do that yet. I do have my septic plans, but I haven't contacted the Board of Health. 
Okay, that's part of the application. Okay, to either yeah. the the board the uh, board of health can give you direction on what's needed for that. Okay. Because we need Anything if you're else? on sewer, it's no big deal. But if you're on septic, you're going to be adding a bedroom, possibly a kitchen and bathroom, and you yeah, need to make sure you, your septic needs to be able to handle the additional load. Okay. okay. And uh, the certification okay. from Anything the board else? of health is part of the application process. Yes. Okay. And the, so do I just fill out the regular building permit, go to the Board of Health, get that done? You need, no, you need to go to the Board of Health separately plans? to get that. It'll be, a, it'll be a little letter that they give you that says your septic system is either okay or you need to put a bigger system in. Okay. okay. And so um, just turn that in with a building permit and send that to you people? No, uh, well, do you need the certification from the Board of Health will be part of right. the application to the planning board. For the, okay. for, for the accessory apartment. And the right. building permit comes later after our approvals. Correct. Right. So uh, that's what I needed to want. Okay. So you want to go to section 26 of the zoning bylaw, and that's available yeah. at hadleyma.org. Uh, yeah, I have it printed out here. Okay. And okay. then you can go down the uh, the list of uh, what the requirements are. Um, okay. And that also goes through the. Oh, well, I have done that. I've made, you know, it's under 900 square feet. I, I have reviewed okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then and there you know, is. I understand that if the house is sold. Um, yeah. So the. the um, what you're looking for is uh, in section 26.2, 26.2.1, with the Board of Health approval. So that is part of what you need okay. to bring into us as part of your application package. And okay. after, okay. then we schedule a public hearing, then there's an appeal okay. period. And after that, you can apply for a building permit. Okay. And so when you say bring it in to you, how do I submit it during these times? When we when we are able to the town hall. When, so yeah, when we are able to conduct regular hearings again, bring it into a regular scheduled planning board meeting, and we will set you, give you a date right there for your public for your uh, public hearing. Okay. So you don't want to see the plans or anything in advance of that public hearing? Well, correct. We, well you, you the date, will be you to the violating the board. Yeah, you'll be filing the plans with the planning board. The public hearing, okay. let's say that we are open in May. So you, if, if you were to come to our uh, first Tuesday in May and gave us a complete applic application, we would be scheduling your public hearing for the first Tuesday of June. Okay. So yes, you, have, you need to file a complete package in advance yeah. of okay. public hearing. Uh, that's how things get right. get the ball rolling. We also need um, a butters uh, addresses uh, on mailing labels. Okay. Two, two so, sets of the butters on either mailing labels or envelopes. Your choice, whichever is easier. You can okay. get that from the board. That from the board of assessors. Okay, and and how far in each direction? A butters and a butters to a butters within 300 feet of your property line, including okay. across the street. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The assessors have a little um, system when you ask for that. They 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 will they, they can do give that give that out to you pretty easily. So okay. You somebody want in a butters list, they'll know what you need. Okay. All right. Perfect. And, and so I'm going to have this package complete. Do I bring it to the town hall? You bring it to a planning board meeting. Planning board meeting. Okay. And so, so I guess I, I don't understand. So you don't want to see it in advance of a planning well, either board. Either I froze or when, when we start to meet again, you will need to apply. You'll need uh, six sets of plans. They can be an eight and a half by eleven. We don't. We, they don't need to be big full size plans. Okay. The two sets of butters list, the information from the Board of Health, and everything else that's in the section 26 that Bill talked about, 
bring that to okay. a regularly scheduled planning board meeting. Normally, okay. we normally meet first and third Tuesday of every month. That's beginning at 630. Just walk in yeah. with that information. We'll call you when your time is when it's ready. Give us the plan. We'll take a quick look at it, make sure it's complete. Give you an application to fill out, which is very simple name, address, what you're going to do. And we'll give you a, a, a filing fee and a filing and a meet public hearing date. The filing fee is typically $325 okay. for an accessory apartment. Okay. You'll file that with the town clerk, show up at the public hearing, tell us what you want to do, and go from there. All right. Perfect. Great. Well, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, let's see. Oh, we want to make a no, we want to make a motion to uh, continue the application to redevelop Hadley Garage. I would so move. I'm sorry, you're breaking up, Jim. What what do we Make, he uh, asked for a motion. Make a motion to continue the public hearing for special permit for site plan approval for the Hadley Garage at 97 Russell Street. Okay. To uh, a date to be announced, depending what when we could continue the public hearing. Hopefully, it'll be the third Tuesday in May, but we're not sure of that. <laughs> so, uh, Mark made the motion, and who seconded? I made the motion. Second. Mark seconded it. Okay. Any discussion? Oh, all in favor, Mr. Dwyer? Aye. Aye. Mr. Sardinsky? Aye. Mr. Zagradnik? Aye. Mr. Dunn? Aye. And myself is also aye. Motion passes unanimously. Um, I'm going to schedule the zoning amendments um for the third tuesday in may just want to let everybody know about that and hopefully we can have a public hearing hopefully we can continue public hearings on that date we will see if i can ask a question going back to the previous um and and bronner so are we discouraging people from submitting um, their packages and mailing them into town hall to? Yes, yes. Yeah. Because a lot of times people will mail them in and it won't be complete and then we're gonna go chasing them. Right. And we can't schedule a public hearing anyways. Right. So it doesn't make sense just to apply for the sake of applying because the governor has said, you know, normally there's a time frame, but that time frame has been extended for quite a while. Okay. So the other part of it is that technically town hall is closed to us too. Got it. The uh, yeah. tax collector checks our mailbox. She she's in she is working and is in charge of getting the mail and sorting it and she calls me if there's anything that looks important in there. I feel wounded. I'm not essential personnel. <laughs> that has an advantage that has its advantages sometimes yes um what else do we have uh let's see we have a couple of more people here john oh. mcmillan i think you were next can you hear me phil can you hear me yes i hear you john okay oh hi hi mark um uh, last meeting, we were discussing the lighting control for the new fire substation. And I didn't have all the information, but I have sent an email to Bill and I can explain how we are controlling those exterior lights. Uh, we were originally here two weeks ago to ask for your permission to add two more exterior pole lights. They were basically on the access drive between the existing parking area and the apparatus apron uh, in front of the apparatus space that was added at the last couple of meetings with the planning board. But the light fixtures that we have uh, currently installed and are installing do have a photocell and a motion detector on each light. 
So you were concerned that the lights would be able to go off and only come on when the uh, when there was somebody you know passing underneath, basically. So we have confirmed that that is possible. Uh, so that's uh, the concern that you had two weeks ago. <clears throat> I can say that we can accommodate that by basically dimming the light down to zero percent uh, until there is a motion sensor triggered on that light, and then we can then we can time that light for between five and. 30 minutes on before it will shut off and basically recycle. There are some lights on the on the building too. There are two wall packs in front of the apparatus doors uh, that are wall mounted, but operate the exact same way. They have photocells and motion motion detectors, and they will come on and off just like the poles will if somebody passes in front of the building. Uh, there are other lights uh, over the entrance and exit doors of the building. Those are on photo cell only. Those are dusk, dusk to dawn. Uh, they are that way for security over the doors and um, safety. Um, there is a, over the front canopy, over the front door, we have a video phone that connects to the emergency dispatcher. And we like those lights to stay on all night, you know, for in case somebody has a personal emergency and wants to, you know, comes to the building not realizing no one's there. They have an opportunity to talk to a dispatcher, possibly get their emergency resolved. Does that meet with your approval? Who's going to be in charge of programming it? Uh, it would be basically the committee, the fire chief, I believe. I, I, I see there's a chief on the participants level, but I don't see that. Well, now he can speak, maybe. Is that you, Mike? That's correct. Okay. So my answer would be the fire chief. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mike, I believe that, that that photo cells and timers and everything else meets your concern or satisfies your concern. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Didn't want it lit up all night long. Right. So it'll be Mike, on when needed and stay on for Mike's here. You just didn't want a thing lit up all night in a residential area, Mike. You understand that. I hope this helps. Well, orig originally, what we had set up was the lights were going to be on all <clears throat> dusk to dawn, uh, but they're only going to be at a forty percent level, so they're going to be very dimmed. But I understand your concern, and we can we can change it to zero percent. Well, it depends what what's what is it what what is it forty percent of? I don't know if that's dim or not. <laughs> Uh, neither do I, not until we actually see it. No. Okay. I think this works, don't you? Okay. okay so I'll and make we, a motion. If I could just say, uh, um, John, that um, if they were on all night at 40% and then they were triggered to go on to 100%, that would obviously be instant. If they're going from off to on, I believe you answered my question last time that they, the fixture type would be an instant on? Yeah, I did check. The LEDs are basically instant on within okay. like five seconds. And okay. they go from off to, they go from on to off, they ramp down and it takes about five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the proposed changes. Second. Motion second. Any other discussion? All in favor, Mr. Dwyer? Aye. Aye. Mr. Zagrodnik? Aye. Mr. S Mr. Dunn? Aye. Mr. Sars? Aye. I, and I, I also am I, so unanimous approval. I think we could probably, if it's going to be unanimous, just declare that um, and okay. not take a roll call unless there's going to be a... Uh, okay. A, All right, we can do what? that. Can we do a thumbs up and then you can see if it's unanimous <laughs> or not? I think I think it's a small enough group that somebody can say something if they object. Yeah, like Mike did last time. Yeah, that's true. Unless we hear a nay, it'll it'll be considered unanimous. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hey, Mark. Man. Take care, John. Uh, John oh. McMillan. Well, he we're just finished with him, so, oh, so uh, he had he had a phone and add on. 
Okay. Uh, there was there was a, a third number here. There was a, a someone who was just identified as a uh, phone number, but they left too. Okay. And uh, looks Tom, like we just have the chief and John now, uh, and John from Highland Media. Yep. And um, and the chief is muted anyway. Um, Mike Spank, Abel, do you have anything else? Or are you just here listening for the heck of it now? I'm still at work. I was just listening while I was getting some more work done. Okay. Well, that's fine. Okay. I just want to make sure you didn't have anything else to comment on. So Tom Reedy was on, and I am not sure if um, he had anything else or just wanted to hear what we said about his... Uh... As, as soon as we voted on the North of the Hadley Garage, he signed <laughs> off. Okay. All right, then I won't bother tracking him down to find out. Oh, um, Megan's Way. As far as I know, Megan's Way meets all the subdivision requirements. And when uh, David Nixon called me during the week on that, I said the only outstanding item was to be sure that he had, that Chris Okafor had a as-built plan. That was, David Nixon said last time he talked to Chris, that was, he didn't have it. I checked with Randy and he has given Chris Okafor an ass built. So he should have everything we needed for approving it and tell me they're accepting the road as a town road. Okay. So we had the this development coordination meeting this afternoon. And at the end of it, uh, David Nixon did raise the question to Chris and I was participating. And what Chris was saying is, yes, he has the same plan that we have. But he says it is insufficient to satisfy Mass DOT to accept the road onto the Chapter 90 reimbursement list. And Chris did say that he had talked with you, Jim, and that you had gone to Mass DOT and they gave I, you. I, I tried to go to Mass DOT and find out what's required for Chapter 90. And they haven't got back to me with who I need to talk to. I've called him twice on it. Okay. So apparently Chris thought you had already gone and had been given what was required. And no, I've, I've not been able to find anybody over there. Talk to that. The the gentleman that's we've been dealing with for the Hadley Garage. Yeah. I've asked him for a contact over there. And he said he was going to give my name to somebody and have him contact me. And that hasn't happened. I'll give I'll give him a call again tomorrow. So, uh, so what I could tell you is Chris is very much still unsatisfied. Uh, okay. He's talking about um, needing a. Um, he was talking about a, an engineer's signature on it. That what what he does have is a survey, and he wants the as-built plan that will satisfy the state. He indicated to me that. The state had given you, I asked him for a, a citation. He said, oh, the, the chairman of the planning board has it. Um, but I guess not. Um, Jim or, or Bill, I'll, I'll probably get into legal territory. It, it almost seems unfair to the developer who has complied with all our rules and regulations regarding our subdivision and what is necessary for approval have someone come in with a new set of lists to trump our subdivision regulations. Perhaps we should, if we're going to incorporate those rules and regulations, they should be incorporated and the new people can comply with what Christopher wants. Uh, well, I, I, go ahead, Bill. Okay, I'm gonna say if it's state regulations, they trump ours, our local regulations. So oh, I agree, it, but we have to make that aware to the, the developer because right now we're putting the, the developer who seems to try to comply with all our rules and regulations. I, I raised that and basically Chris, David Nixon and I talked about that. I asked David Nixon if there was his, a lot of land use regulations as you've seen, whether it's Conservation Commission rules versus the planning board rules. You know, they're, they're going like this. They're just yeah. passing each other in the night. 
so I asked David Nixon if there was a specific requirement in the statutory process for accepting a public way that there be an as-built plan. And he said that he really didn't know it had never come up, but that he thought that uh, if it would be bad optics to request a um, approval or acceptance of a way that the DPW directors uh, did not support. Uh, and that's always been, I don't think we've ever seen a way accepted over the objection of uh, the DPW or the highway chief. So um, I will do a little more digging into the chapter 90 regulations to see if I can find uh, find something. If we've been doing it wrong, you know, we, we just say as built plan. There is a definition of as-built plan out there somewhere. Yes, we probably should amend the regulations to uh, to address that. Uh, but that's been the disconnect all along. We, <clears throat> Chris, when Chris says he doesn't have an as-built plan, he is saying that the same plan that we have is not satisfactory. So. But uh, We've got to straighten right. that and out. So, and so it sounds like Joe's question is, is Chris's definition of an ads build plan what we've been going by up until now, or is this Chris's new definition? Well, right? yeah, I think that's what Joe is saying. But it, the fact is, if, the, if there is a definition of an ads build plan out there that we should have been working off of, and we haven't, um, you know, I'm, Okay, he pointed it out. We now, we, we at least we know what we're talking about now. But but whose but, responsibility is it to point out that our definition is lacking? Is it a well, lawyer's? Uh, we didn't run the subdivision regulations past town council. Uh, we did that pretty much all with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. All right. Uh, and even if we had run it by town council, when if you use the buzzword as built plan. If, if it turned out that we have been using a planning definition of as-built plan, and there is a real world definition of as-built plan out there, um, yeah, we should probably should have caught it in the uh, well, application process, in the, the drafting if, the regulations. If, if the PVPC says it's okay, and we're, we're relying on their guidance, what's the problem? The, the, if the state has a different regulation that, that the PVPC and we are not aware of, we've got to find out what that means. But, but, but isn't that why we pay the PVPC to tell us about this stuff? Uh, I'm, I'm being a yeah. bit argumentative here, but I, I think that, you know, us trying to debate what the state's telling us to do and what ours is, is pointless because the, it's the PVPC's responsibility. It's not the, the, the DPW had nor ours, it's what PVP yeah, well, said. Sure. But, but we're in the middle of it now. Yeah. Uh, th those regulations were drafted, we're talking three, four years ago now, five years ago. Um, and uh, this is the first subdivision road, well actually this is even a road acceptance under the old subdivision rules. Uh -huh. So the you know, point okay. is we're here now. Someone has pointed out that there is a discrepancy and um, we're, we need to look into it a little more, but at least we have advanced this enough so we know what we're talking about. Yeah. We'll get to the bottom of it. As soon as I can find who, who I need to speak to at DOT, we should be, should be easy enough to address once we find out. Yeah. So, and I would imagine an attorney, if Megan's way were to push it, would say, "What has the town of Hadley's planning board asked previously under this standard?" But are you saying this is the first one under this standard? No, actually, no. I'm remembering now. This is under okay. the old standard. Okay, old standard. this is the old standard. Right. We haven't had any application. We've had one application under the new standard. Okay. That's the one uh, 
Who was it? Was the one that uh, which is named Walker Washkevitz, Alpha Shattuck. Uh, yeah, that was uh, a Valley Construction Company, Valley Building Company. Right. So, um, but we come down. What we come down to is that even it's not our decision to make at this point. It's yeah. town meeting's yeah. decision to make, and you can bet someone's going to stand up and say, "What does the DPW say?" Um, and we know what the DPW says that we don't have enough information. So, um, and, and in all honesty, we did, uh, you, you may recall, well, not all of you, but we did, we haven't accepted the road, but we did accept what we said it was an as built plan for the uh, road off of Rocky Hill Road, um, new subdivision off Rocky Hill Road. And um, turned out when, um, Carl Sightwork went out there to dig up something and dug up utility lines instead, they realized, we all realized the as-built plan was wrong. So, um, so let's, we we'll just keep on, we've got to resolve it. Yeah. So we'll find out more information. Affordable Housing Trust, do we have any, I know we've been, we've been, we, discussing the uh, calculation. And I've been thinking about that. The calculations are all over the place. Some of them are asking for all kinds of money and some of them are asking for reasonable amounts. I think the ones that are asking for huge amounts of money are trying to discourage donations to the Affordable Housing Trust. And that's what it appears to me. And the ones that have a more reasonable number are more inclined to encourage the donation to the Affordable Housing Trust. I think you're absolutely right. That that is uh, what uh, that's clearly what comes across. That um, and Somehow, I think we have to talk about it. I'm sure, but I think we do. We would support favor donations. That's my opinion. I mean, we've got to, it would, I think it would behoove us to simply have a decent fund that could be used when the right circumstances arise. Mike, you had some ideas on a calculation. Did you ever run numbers on it? Uh, I did, but I don't have them with me. But it was basically the calculation would entail determining what the cost to build a property, the affordable housing unit was, and we have to define what the unit is. Is it a two bedroom? Is it a three bedroom? Is it a one bedroom? What the cost is, including the land, insurance costs over a period of say 20 years, and then seeing what the rents would be that we would get, i.e. the subsidized rents. And so the actual subsidized cost that would go into the fund would be the difference between the cost of constructing maintaining, insuring, and the rents over a 20 year period. And you could discount that back to the president and say it three and a half percent, four percent. And that and that would be what would be contributed to the trust fund, that difference. Because what are you actually subsidizing? You're subsidizing what the amortization cost of building it would be versus what the rents are coming in. And that's the and that's what's being subsidized. Tell, tell me if I'm wrong. I think I'm just trying to come up with a way to mathematically calculate it as opposed to just throwing something against the wall, which seemed to be what was happening when we got all the examples in. Well, I, I agree with that, but I just want to, you know, we would, what, what your 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 logic sounds decent, but what would a number be for a lot is a is a question I would have, because the way you present yeah. it, it sounds like it would be fairly significant. Well, I, I recall talking to somebody in the um, uh, senior center, the director there, whatever her name is, and uh, she told me that. The subsidized rent for a two bedroom apartment was nine, $900 a month. So I know what it costs. Okay. okay. I, know, I know what the revenue is coming in. All we're going to do is determine 
what it costs to build it. And the difference is what's being subsidized. Follow me? Yes. But Certainly, Mike's, Mike's bringing up the point of cost analysis. Uh, the gesture is very noble. However, the devil is going to be in the detail if the house that the town said could be rehabbed for affordable housing and we can use the money from the trust fund, will it have to go before a town meeting? Will it have to go before our board? Because- no, town, uh, town meeting. The way the, the way the housing trust fund is set up, the money expended from the housing trust needs town meeting approval. Yeah, yeah but the calculation of what the developer has to put in the trust fund is completely separate from how the trust fund is spending the money. It's completely separate calculation. Yeah, the money that's being put into the trust fund only needs the approval of the board of acceptance from the board of trustees of the trust fund. I mean, yeah, when we got the original contribution from Barry from East Street Commons, I mean, it was essentially a negotiated contribution. It wasn't something that was calculated based on a mathematical formula. That's correct. Yeah. And we, from this, from going forward with this fund, it would be nice to have a calculation that this is the way it's gotta be. If you wanna to contribute to the fund, this is the this is the formula. If you don't like the contribution rate, then you got to put the house on your put that yeah. subsidized uh, item on your property someplace. Uh -huh. So basically, we got a, the cost calculation, revenue calculation. Both are pretty simple to come up with. The cost yeah. calculation, whatever it costs to build it, the cost of the land, insurance, taxes. We got a lump sum, okay? We got a lump sum. What does it cost to amortize that sum over say a 15 year mortgage? That's the actual cost of the property. The next question is, what are the rents coming in? That's the revenue. The difference is what goes into the trust fund. Right. And the, the only the variable is what is being built, okay? Is it a one bedroom? Is it a two bedroom? Is it a three bedroom? The way Oh, you're talking about a single, well, the way the housing trust fund is written for a subdivision yeah. is a single family home. Yeah. Um, I would probably guess two to three bedrooms, yeah. probably one and a half baths, a, a normal, probably like a, I'm going to take a while, guess somewhere around a 12 to 1400 square foot house. Well, yeah, that, that calculation is pretty easy to come up with as to what it's going to cost. And I don't think when we determine what the cost is, that should, there should be no profit built into that cost. It's just, it's right. the wholesale cost, okay? Right, the wholesale cost. Well, that's what we're going to be subsidizing off of, the wholesale cost of the property. Right. There's not going to be any 20% or 30% or whatever the hell the profit margin is. Right. If, so, I get you, if I get you the wholesale cost of a house, Mike, can you run the numbers and come up with a, a simple fee for like a, say a 12 to 1400 square foot house? Yeah. Okay. I, think so. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna put the numbers in an amortization schedule, you know, and, and we'll, we'll see what the amortized cost is and then we see what the rents are and that's what's being subsidized. You gotta bring it all back to the present, okay? That's fine. Okay, I'll I'll try to get you the yeah. the wholesale cost of a house. That was good. On a square foot basis, including. including I mean, obviously the, that's a market rate. I mean, it really moves around. But I guess you're going to take the lower end because it's public housing. It's not something where you're opting in for all these extras, right? Well, yeah. This is gonna this is gonna be a like a, a simplified. It's not going to be a high end house. It's going to be you know. Like the Formica account is not going to be core. It's going to be a, a basic, simple house. Let's assume it's a two-bedroom. Okay. And then we'll, I, because I think the rents that the woman over at the senior center gave me was for a two-bedroom, and she made the comment aside that the the rents had gone up. And you know we can't control that. It just it is what it is. We're not. We're just trying to determine. I told her a bit about the tr housing trust fund, and immediately they 
think we're going to be providing a subsidy for something, and that's not the point of this yeah. calculation. Yeah. Okay. The, the housing trust fund is not to provide a subsidy, it's to, to give basically a developer a chunk of money to build a house at affordable cost. Yeah, so if we, if we can come up with the wholesale price of the house, including land costs, we can figure out what the taxes would be on it, what the insurance would be on it. That's the number we're gonna amortize over, say a 15 year mortgage or whatever it is right now, 3%, 2.75, I don't know. And then we've we got the rents in and the difference is what's being subsidized. Then we can see how that- and Clearly can... day by day, and that number would change, but this is gonna be a snapshot in time. Right. We're going to have to rely on when a builder comes in, he's going to have to tell us what the wholesale price of that house is going to be. And some engineer is going to have to verify that. He's just not going to pull something out of the air, you know? Okay. Okay. Is that uh, reason? What else do you have, Bill? Uh, we have... Um... Uh, received the stipulation of dismissal. Oh yes. In the uh, matter of Citarelli versus Planning Board at all, and uh, Joel Bard has asked that we uh, approve his signing the stipulation of dismissal. So, so we don't know, Bill, what the agreement was. That's a private matter. It is. We uh, are. And we're necessary party to this, but yeah. uh, we have no stake in it. Uh, we gave them, we gave the applicant what he wanted. The yeah. um, a butter appealed, and yeah. they have worked it out. Do, do you recall? Does anybody recall when we did the site plan on the the new quote unquote new North Hadley garage? If we provided for lighting up and down the sides of the building like that, it's well, pretty. I didn't participate, but I don't recall that on the plans. I don't recall that much lighting on the plan. No, I think we've got to really look at that and ask the uh, building inspector to, because there, there's, there's been people bringing this up that it's really lit up at night. And it's, um, I would call it, in fact, a bit garish. Uh, and we should probably see if the uh, building inspector can enforce what we, we uh, approved. Could we send a letter to that effect? Well, let's go back and find out what we actually approved and yeah. compare the two before we draft a letter. Well, could we approve the uh, the letter for the attorney to dismiss it in? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a separate topic. Let, let, let's go. These are two separate issues, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Have, Mr. White, you made a motion to do the dismissal? I'll uh, I'll let someone else make the motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, accept Joel Bar. How would I word that? To approve dis uh, approve dismissal. Approve dismissal of the uh, lawsuit. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Abstain. And we have the motion passes four to zero with one abstention. So this does not mean that we cannot, uh, once we get a look at the plans, if all of a sudden he says a couple of lights were going to be on the building, I remember that, but I don't remember them kind yeah. of outlining the uh, the facade of the- Right. You know, I, I think he put a few extra lights on the building. We'll look at the plans when we get a chance to see what we, what we approve. And then think, one other thing, can we learn something from this, from the suit? Uh, Bill, probably this is directed more at you. I think we had good intentions when we thought that there was some ongoing uh, business as a garage. Uh, and she did, did bring some paperwork in. But evidently in one of the uh, legal ramifications that went over the email, we should have, we, the planning board, should have sent it to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a finding rather than make that decision on our own. Is, am I correct? In, in that, that was an argument that was raised by the, uh, by the abutter. But whether we can, whether there's anything to learn about that or not, I don't know because it's been dismissed. The issue wasn't, hadn't been, hasn't been addressed.
So you don't want to give your legal opinion next time we should or should not, or we, I, would... I think you're kind of asking Mr. Dwyer to step out on a limb and give advice that uh, we should be getting <laughs> control barred. Yeah, I, I think the next time we, we get a situation where someone is asking uh, um, to, to rely on grandfathering a use that is sort of at the at the fringe of, of the uh, grandfather period, maybe we should ask for Joel for town council's opinion at that point. The Mark and Mike, uh, Bill was very subtle to us once in a while when we thought we were practicing law, he would get out his card and he would slide it in front of us and saying, I'd, leave scratch, off, to me. I'd scratch off my name and put uh, John <laughs> Devine Jr. Esquire. Okay, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, so okay, I'll uh, I'll contact Joel and tell him to let it go. Uh, and I'll also try to contact Chris uh, tomorrow. Just uh, drop him an email just to let him know that there there's still some some gaps here. Okay. And I think that is all that I have. Um, Chinese submersion school. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess the, uh, the outbuilding. Yes, on the the walk-in business. Let me see if I can bring that up. Hey, Mark, just so you'll know, you must be using an awful lot of your RAM because every once in a while, when you move on your picture, yeah, disappear until you until your your computer can catch up. Um, yeah. Your shoulder, your head will stay there, but your shoulders disappear for a second, probably because you're using so much RAM with the background. Yeah, and uh, it could also be that I'm on Wi-Fi, but yeah, not too much broke RAM, is it? <laughs> so I think I we're am, all on Wi-Fi. Yeah, I am having uh, some trouble getting down to uh, my base directory here, um, my desktop, and I don't. Okay. Um. So what I'm going to do is let me just pull it up on my other computer here and uh, see if I can do justice to explain it. So, well, has everybody seen what the Chinese Immersion Charter School has requested? Did you see the email that Bill sent out? Yeah, yes. they're, they're moving that barn from where it was hidden behind the building right up to that front little bend in their site. Right. It'll still have 15 foot setbacks. Yeah. And they're, they're increasing, was it 24 by 20 to 24 by 30 or something like that? A 20 by 24 to 20 by 30, yeah. Yeah, slightly larger. Yeah. Is that going to be the exact rendering of what the building is going to look like uh, along with the landscaping? This they said it's not that, not, that, not all those options. options. <laughs> it's a promotional building. Uh, so, uh, Actually, that is something that, oh, Chief has left us now. Um, what if we do give approval for the relocation of that shed? Uh, uh, certainly you would like to see a rendering and we'll assume that what they did present to us is the ring that we're going to get. Well, he said that, he said that the shed will look like what he's shown. He said it will look similar, but not with all those options. Well. So probably less doors and windows. Okay, so it, it seems like we need to request more information. Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks like a company's rendering rather than what actually is gonna be built. And, uh,
Yeah, okay. Here's a picture of the proposed shed, except that it has far more options than we would use. So what does that mean? It means so there's gonna be more stripped down, down, I guess. Gonna put up. If they don't want to draw it all up, maybe they could just take that that photo and cross off items that they're not planning to put in. So then we can, you know, envision it. They should be able to get us a picture of what they're going to build. It's not a big shed. No. And if the, the company that I'm assuming is one of those prefab jobs where they come up and they put it up pretty quick, they should be able to get them a picture of what you're going to build. So uh, we'll contact Mark Darnold and say we need a final design. It said it's a two story also, so I guess we should have a height. It probably won't be an issue in that area because it, it is the industrial district. So there's a higher height. Right. So it's not going to bust any limits. Right. Height wise, it shouldn't be a problem. Right. I mean, you got to. The building itself is taller. Yeah. I do know they're pretty uh, well. It's not not that much different than what was proposed, but they're they're they pretty much maxed out that site for uh, uh, they're they're not com parking compliant. They're uh, uh, barely green space compliant. No ball fields. They're going to use the young men's club now. Are they creating a, a driveway or a walkway up to the uh, Michaels? Um, there's some kind of a pathway off the east side of their parking lot that it looks like it's, I mean, there's no curb. So it looks like cars could come down it, but I'm not sure it's wide enough for a uh, two way. Oh, uh, that is an emergency access. Oh. Yeah, there is a chain across it. Oh, okay. We did ask that they, uh, we went back and forth a little bit about whether they could get something in writing from the management, uh, WS development, about parents parking over there and walking to the school. And WS was not interested in granting any kind of an easement or license, but mm -hmm. we did require that they put in an emergency entrance there so that if um, we had to get a fire truck in, there'd be another way to do it. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. So you're going to request more from Mark, or you want me to do it? No. Uh, I could just, he sent the email to me, so I'll just return that. Okay. Look, asking for more detail. Okay. Are we through this topic? Yeah. If we could return briefly to the calculation of what is being subsidized uh, in, for the insurance trust. Are subsidized parties do they enjoy a tax break? I'm just curious when I'm trying to figure out what the taxes would be. Do they enjoy a tax break no. if they subsidize housing? Not. Hmm. Good question. I'm afraid I don't know that. No, I don't know. We might need to ask Dan Zidonic about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, generally, commercial properties can be taxed. Uh, this is why we they're uh, in down times, we're always getting hit with abatement requests that they. Um, yeah they are taxed based on their revenue potential. 
as oh, opposed yeah. to their raw land value. Yeah. And when they are not as um, producing as much revenue, the first thing they do is come back and ask to have the taxes abated retroactively. Yeah. This will be an interesting thing with this uh, moratorium of how many businesses in town request an abatement for certain things, a lot of the restaurants, et cetera, because there's a real possibility there's going to be a whole bunch of abate abatement requests in town. Well, the other point is going to hit, hit our budget because the meals and room tax. Oh, yeah. yeah. Abs we're absolutely. Gonna, we're going to take a hit. Yeah. There's going to have a, there's going to be a big domino effect here. So. Hopefully not as bad as the oil companies. Well, M Mark, it's, it's amazing that the dairy farmers are dumping milk. So they're in the same boat, but you can't dump oil. No. Unless you have a pool in your backyard with company. <laughs> a cistern, yeah. So uh, a very big pool. The um, select board meeting last week was a tri board meeting with the school and the finance committee. And uh, so I, I did watch that. And Amy Fiden was very vocal about uh, uh, facing this aggressively. And Amy's the chair of the finance committee, facing this aggressively and making proactive cuts. Um, one of the, the things that uh, she had suggested was that we may not want to proceed with um, the planner position, however it defined. Um, they did hire a uh, part-time human resources uh, director to step in when the current uh, human resources director goes on active duty in a while. Um, but there was definitely talk about um, uh, cutting. And um, so we'll see how that plays out as they get closer to whenever town. I, I don't think they've actually set a date for town meeting yet. No, they, they, they said the last I heard was to be determined on that one. Yeah. Yeah, this probably won't be the year that we get to increase the uh, PDPC budget because we were looking to double it. I that's, think that's a possibility too. They're gonna yeah. gonna have to cut every little reasonable corner they can. Well, everybody's gonna have to reprice their services. I mean, from commercial rents on down. I mean, otherwise, things aren't just gonna aren't gonna work. Restaurants. In Manhattan, you're not going to be able to sit like this anymore. And so, every it, the economy is repricing itself, and it's going to take a long time. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, I've been working at home for the last three weeks, and I don't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it for five weeks now. Yeah. Yeah. These, these, these meetings are a bit inconvenient without having a public hearing, but they they are kind of nice being able to sit here and. Seems a lot more, it's a lot more convenient in one way. Yeah. yeah. So. so poor, poor Joe is far away from, Joe, farther away from Joe's pizza. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do with that. He's hurting the meeting. I've got a better meal tonight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anybody have anything else? So, so just to re on this uh, amortization of whatever the wholesale cost is, including land, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to dip, I'm going to amortize it over a 15 year period using the then published 15 year conventional mortgage at East Hampton Savings Bank. Okay. That sounds like a plan to start with. Okay. Sure. Okay. And I'll get you the wholesale cost. Yeah. Including land. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. I'm going to end the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. I would second. All right. All, right. All, All right. in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Bye, bye, John. Good night. Good night.